Thanks, Chrissy. Yeah, we love a challenge. We'll get there. Um, Bulletin Resources. I'll just start with a quick introduction before I get into our Ravensthorpe project and give you a bit of a story of where we're at with it. Um, we're pretty well funded with over $12 million in cash shares and receivables. 300 million shares were just under on issue there with a market cap of about 15 million, so a very low EV at present and plenty of opportunity to improve it. Very experienced board with us who have been very supportive throughout this process and also, very importantly, a large shareholding. We're very keen not to dilute and to protect our funds and use them as best as we can. I want to talk about our main project, our Ravensort Lithium project. We've had a few hurdles in there. Um, we've just put up front there, Department of Mines has refused our drilling permit, but it's a very good project for us. And I just want to go through with that and about what we're doing with it and why we think we can still get going, going forward. The project itself is 100% owned by ourselves. We're only 12 kilometres from Mount Catlin, uh, an existing lithium processing plant and the, lake, and the processing mine itself. Um, we've got very good mineralisation at surface. We haven't done any drilling in the area which we want to drill it at. And our preliminary metallurgical test work shows we can produce a very strong and very high grade concentrate. Our main area of interest is a four kilometre trend of spodumene bearing pegmatites. There's over 100 pegmatite outcrops we've found to date and we've seen very high grade spodumene in there and that's the result of the coarseness of the spodumene, just like at Mount Catlin, just down the road there. So we're seeing grades of five, six and seven percent lithium in our rock chips. And where we don't see spodumene outcropping on the surface, we use other geochemistry such as, such as potassium rubidium ratios. In the very southern part of the previous slide there, we've got an area called the big pegmatite, which is our main area of interest. And in that 500 by 700 metre area there, there's about 40 outcropping pegmatites, where we're seeing very low potassium rubidium ratios, which indicates that there's strong mineralisation at depth, as well as we're seeing good spod coarse spodumene grades. So it really shows to us that there's high potential of finding spodumene at depth. We've taken about a 100 kilo sample out from that area there, and we've put it through effectively a, a desktop study, a bench top test, the same flow sheet as Mount Catlin mine, and we're seeing very similar product as what to Mount Catlin is processing. We're seeing con concentrate grades greater than 6% lithium, very good recoveries even under bench scale test and we've seen importantly very low iron which is very important for the high quality and a high price situation. And we believe with further work and improve those outcomes to get a very similar product to what's being shipped out of Mount Cutland just now. Our drilling proposal is, round, is focused on the main area of which we've seen of spodumene and that's a bit like big pegmatite. We're proposing to clear up to 2.3 hectares of drill pads and tracks to get into the area. There's, there's no drilling in this area at all just now. It's, it's an hour and a half walk into this area, which is why we need a fairly long track just to get into the area. We've done environmental surveys in the area and they show that all, the, the, all our proposed works are of low impact. Earlier last year, by a local community group, we were referred to the EPA. The EPA spent most of last year reviewing our project and at the end decided that not to assess it. We weren't significant enough for their review. We went back into the DEMOS process, and then last month, DEMOS decided not to assess our drilling proposal. We believe they haven't taken into account the work we have done in, in environmental studies and in our offsets and our avoidance and mitigation measures in doing this project. We acknowledge we're in an area that has been largely cleared to the north through agriculture, and there's not all that much vegetation left in this area, it's still significant, but it's all very precious down that part of the world. And we've proposed, we've done our drill plans accordingly, and we've been very cautious in what we've done. So we've lodged an appeal with the appeals convener, and we're hopeful that with further discussions, we will get our project up and away. I just want to go a bit into what we have been doing. We've been fairly silent on this, because we acknowledge it's a sensitive issue for some people. We've been very proactive in looking at our ESG environment, social and government practices in the area. We're proposing, as I said earlier, up to 2.3 hectares of clearing in this area, and we're in the Kokarinup Timber Reserve. Now, for those who aren't aware, a, a timber reserve is an area of vegetation that's set aside from clearing from earlier days when there was mass clearing for, um, for, the, um, sorry, for the farming industry. 
There's lots, lots of agriculture in there and a lot of local forestry is gone through forestry. But we're within 352,000 areas of forest in the area, 2.3 hectares is not a significant amount. But we acknowledge it's always important to do the best you can. Clearing and drilling has occurred previously in the timber reserve back in 2017, not in the area we have done. But DMOs, when they granted us our tenant in 2020, they noted that we could do exploration in the area. As part of our drilling program, we've done numerous avoidance and mitigation measures. We, we acknowledge we're in a sensitive area there with vegetation. We've reduced our original program to a smaller program to test the main big pegmatite area. There's no threatened flora in the area, so we've gone down the next rung into priority flora, and we're avoiding all that as well. And we're also taking additional measures, such as having an environmental officer with us when we do our clearing, so making sure we reduce our impacts to erosion, dust, fire, and, and noise. We've already committed to rebuilding all the tracks and reseeding back to native vegetation. And we've also committed to do, putting in offsets so we can um, replace the area with vegetation from other areas. One of the issues for DEMOs is that there are cockatoos in the area. Have I lost my... I've lost my mic. Ooh, I'm back. There are, we, to the north of where we're drilling, there are carnaby cockatoos, and that's one of the important, they are a threatened species, and it's one of the things we seriously looked at when we considered our program. We are to the south of where they are nesting. We've, we've designed our track and pads to avoid all, all nesting trees. We've committed to working outside the cockatoo breeding time, which is in spring, so we've got time outside of that time to work in the area when they're not there. We're limiting the area of clearing of foraging habitat or food that they eat to 0.64 of a hectare, which is well below the threshold of referral in the federal system. And we've also, for other animals as well in the area, avoiding all malafowl nests, and we've got other measures to avoid impacts to other fauna and their habitat as well. So we've really gone in and made a strenuous effort to make sure we're doing the best practices as what we can. But we do acknowledge we are operating in, a, in an area that's sensitive. There are some locals in the area who don't want any mining, and we acknowledge that. And maybe it's part of that. What we need to do is educate people in the area, because we do believe that mining can help habitat loss as well from climate change. Even the EPA recognises climate change is likely to evolve habitat loss going, in the for going forward. In 2010, there was a heat wave, unfortunately, where several hundred cockatoos suffered through heat stress. And just, just as a note there, I'll put up, in February this year, globally around the world, there was 10 stations of long-term weather stations that recorded the record temperatures. Five of those 10 locations are in Carnaby Range. So there's threats as well, not just to habitat loss, but also to climate change. And lithium is one of those metals that can help with the climate change situation. So I really understand Dima's point that they want to conserve, but long term, which is outside their scope of influence and review, is the longer term impacts of climate change. So as an industry, we can, and maybe we need to promote ourselves a bit more as well, in, in, in positive outcomes. We're, we're an industry that can produce enormous amounts of money. Last year, Mount Catlin produced over half a billion dollars in profit. And it doesn't take much of that money to go towards working towards the environment to improve outcomes. And for example, in Carnaby Cockatoos, mining can help by we can purchase land that's forested and keep it aside for conservation purposes. We can purchase farmland and rehabilitate that and increase habitat areas. There's all sorts of scientific programs we can fund to. We can do little small little things like building water dams for the birds so they've got enough water in the area and even feral abatement and other programs such as that. So there's a good opportunity for us, I believe, in this mining industry going forward that we can help the environment. And even ourselves in our own little in exploration programs, only 2.3 hectares in a broader scheme, but we can also offer a net environmental benefit. We've already put aside funds for environmental programs in the area. We've spread our feelers out to the local conservation groups to work with them to help the Carnaby cockatoos and other fauna in the area. We've already done work looking at artificial cockatoo breeding nests. They work very well in other parts of the state. There's no reason why they can't work in the Ravensthorpe area. 
and we've put aside funds to purchase land for cockatoo and other habitats as an offset for the small work that we're doing. And it's not just the environmental side as well, it's also the social side that we're also looking at as well. Ravensthorpe, although it's largely a mine, uh, large in the area of agriculture, has a very significant mining community. Nearly a quarter of a cent, up until recently, up until last week with the nickel mine close, were involved in the mining industry. But even outside of that, lithium is still a major employer in the area. The Mount Catlin lithium mine is scheduled to close in 2028. It's only four years away now. And there is a long-term trend for lithium, so we can see the market going forward, and there's an opportunity for us to use that plant should it become available. So with our small plans and our practices and environmental studies, we, we feel we've got a good case with discussions with the Pilks and Vena to move forward and to get a positive outcome, and that's what we're aiming for on that stage. Rain source not our only project. We do have several other projects, mainly focused in gold. Our Lake Rebecca project is 150 kilometres east of Kalgoorlie. Uh, we're rapidly being surrounded by Romulus resources who have, over the last couple of years, taken up a very aggressive stance in the area, which shows just the prospectivity of the, prospectivity of the, of the zone. We're in the very southern part of the Canelpi terrain. Since 2018, there's been two large deposits found, Rebecca and further south, the former breaker resources, Lake Row, which is now Romulus. Our Rebecca project is right on the boundary of Romulus's Rebecca deposits. And in around the Rebecca area, their gold trend extends into our ground. We've drilled just to meet it. We've sold back in 2019, we sold some ground to, at the time it was Apollo, for $5 million in shares. But we've still kept the remainder of the trend to further to the north. So we've still got 700 metres of untested strike to test. And the grades we've been seeing to date are very similar to those that we've seen to the south. We've seen wide-grade golden goldenisms of 11 metres at 1 gram with little high-grade hits of 1 metre 11 and 1 metre at 3. Very similar situation to what's seen further south. So it's encouraging for us to keep on exploring in that area. And in the wider package, we've got 600 kilometres of ground to spare. Over 100 square kilometres of tenants 100 square k's of target areas to produce, to look at. It's a large tenement package, but we're just going to work through it progressively. There's been very little historical exploration in the area. We're going to start with, we've been starting with soils and we're just progressively working through it. What we are targeting is something very similar to Rebecca. Large, low, it's not low to moderate grade, but large tonnage deposits, all in granites. Further to the south, we also have the Chifley deposit. It's a long strike from the, RMS Romulus' Lake Road deposit on the Claypan Fault Zone. We've already done some soil sampling in the area and we've got a one kilometre square gold anomaly to follow up, which we'll do some further work this year just to define it a bit better before drilling. And very briefly, with Mount Farmer project just near Mount Magnet here. Um, we've had other people talking about rare earths. We've got lithium and rubidium in there as targets. We're still waiting for another tenement to be granted in the area, but this is so, so we're looking at that prospect there for rubidium, lithium and also to the south, Spartan Resources also has some very high grade gold deposits down there. So we've still got some work to do in that area as well. So that's our story as we sit today. We still remain a strong investment case, I believe. We believe we can still go forward at, at Ravensthorpe and we're looking forward to success coming in that field. So thanks very much for your time.